Parker. Is Maxwell House really the only coffee in the world? Well, your father says so, and your father knows best. <laughs> Yes, it's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons, brought to you by America's favorite coffee, Maxwell House. The coffee that's always good to the last drop. Quite a few years ago, a poet said, Write me a verse, my old machine. I lack for an inspiration. The skies are blue and the trees are green, and I long for a long vacation. Well, writers aren't the only ones who dream of blue skies and Elysian fields. They just talk about it more than anyone else. Bankers and bricklayers, cobblers and carpenters, they all dream of vacation time, even as you and I. Even as do the Andersons in the white frame house on Maple Street. Like this. Well, give me one reason. Give me one good reason. Jim, we've been spending our vacation at Round Lake for almost ten years. That's what I mean. We're in a rut. But you've always liked Round Lake. Why this sudden affection for Highland Hills? Because, honey, look, I had a long talk with Henry Liggett today. You've said yourself we can't afford to do the things the Liggetts do. But Henry said it isn't expensive. Maybe a little more than Round Lake, but uh, not much. I like Round Lake. It's small. It's informal. And you've always liked it, too. Margaret, it isn't that I don't like Round Lake. It's just that, well, you mustn't forget that we're getting ahead in Springfield. I'm a successful businessman. I've got to conduct myself like a successful businessman. There's a certain uh, dignity about Highland Hills. Father! What is it, Betty? Did you remember to pick up my blue dress at the cleaner's? It won't be ready until tomorrow. He said he'd have it today. Remind me to call my lawyer in the morning. We'll sue. Ha, ha. <laughs> She's got a whole closet full of dresses, but if she can't have that particular one... Uh, what was I saying? Highland Hills is dignified. Oh. Well, we'll meet a lot of people who may do me a great deal of good in a business way. And besides... They have a wonderful golf course. Yes. Uh, no, I mean, uh, <laughs> Margaret, Henry Liggett assured me... Jim, you don't seem to understand. A vacation has a definite purpose. You're supposed to relax. Why can't you relax at Highland Hills? Because it's a very fashionable resort. Oh. Everyone is always dressed to the eyes. There isn't a peaceful moment in the entire day. That isn't so. Why, Henry Liggett told me... Mother! I'm sorry, dear. What is it, Kathy? Yeah, I have a glass of milk. Not now, dear. We'll be having our dinner in a few minutes. But I'm thirsty. Drink some water. Water? <laughs> okay. Sounds as though she never heard of this stuff. <laughs> Jim, you know, there are several things you seem to have forgotten. First, we've had our reservation at Round Lake since last August. That's no problem, Margaret. They can get rid of that cottage in two minutes if we give it up. And second, you take only a two-week vacation, and, of course, weekends, but the children and I are gone for the entire summer. Certainly you ought to consider our feelings in the matter. All right, I'll tell you what. We'll take a vote on it. What kind of a vote? I'll explain the whole setup to the kids, and then we'll take a vote. Round Lake versus Highland Hills. That's fair, isn't it? Jim, that's the silliest idea I've ever heard. Do you mean you're going to let a mere infant like Kathy... Well, she'll only have half a vote. Jim. And to make sure I get a fair shake, I'll take the other half. All right, Jim, I just hope you know what you're doing. I think I do. Betty, Bob, Kathy! Coming, Daddy! Boy, it's about time. I'm starved. Your father wants to talk to you, Bud. About what? I didn't do anything. Did I? <laughs> Do you want me, Father? Come down here. We've got something important to discuss. Oh? Okay. What's all the shooting for, partner? Kathy, if you don't... Oh, Kathy, look at your dress. It got splashed. That's oh. the greatest understatement of the week. What were you doing, deep-sea diving in the sink? 
I was taking a drink. Well, why didn't you use a glass? You said I should drink some water. You didn't say to use a glass. <laughs> Kathy. Yes, Daddy? Breathe. What? I haven't told you to breathe lately. I wouldn't want you to stop now. <laughs> Dad, I think I know where I can find it if somebody didn't take it. If somebody didn't take what? The library book. What library book? The one I lost. Is that what you want to talk to me about? No. Oh. Father, Mr. Manassian promised that he'd have the blue dress ready today. Betty, he didn't feel well. He had a headache. Oh. Well, I didn't need it anyway. Dad. What is it, bud? Joe Phillips and I are going to chip in and pay for the parking ticket together. You got a parking ticket? You didn't want to talk about that either, huh? <laughs> No, but we will. Yeah, I figured we would. <laughs> Jim, we only have a few minutes before dinner. All right, Margaret, I'll tell them about it right now. Well, while you're doing that, I'll put the biscuits in the oven. That'll be fine, dear. Kids, what would you say if I told you we weren't going to Round Lake this summer? Father! Holy cow, Dad. We didn't do anything, Daddy. Now, wait a minute. There's no need to get all upset. I was merely trying to find out what you think about going somewhere besides Round Lake, that's all. Besides, you mean we can go someplace else for the whole summer? Creepers! Hey, I know a good place to go. Now, just a minute, bud. I want to go to Camp Mishawaski. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Father, there's the most heavenly place. I know a place way up in the hills, and Joe Phillips says they don't do anything all day but play baseball. Stop it. Dick Andrews and Bill Martin are going to be the lifeguards, and they told me you've never seen any place. I said stop it. Patty Davis is going to Camp Mishawaski, and if she can go to Camp Mishawaski, I don't see why I can't go to Camp... Stop it! Mishawaski? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard anything like this in my life. Anybody think you were reared in a barn? But, Father, you said... Never mind what I said. I didn't say anything about Dick Andrews or Joe Phillips or any idiotic camp wishy-washy. <laughs> Mishawaski. Thank you. Now, if you'll just simmer down for a few minutes, maybe I can get a word in edgewise. It's not a question of going just any place. I've got another spot all picked out. Is it Camp Mishawaski? No, it isn't Camp Mishawaski. <laughs> She will. And it isn't the place where Dick Andrews is the lifeguard. Or the place where they do nothing but play baseball with antelopes all day. <laughs> Jumping creepers. Go ahead, bud. What? I said, go ahead, drop the other shoe. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> all right. Now, I've been talking this whole thing over with your mother, and we've agreed to put it to a vote. We'll decide between Round Lake and... Yes? Highland Hills. Oh, no. Gosh, Dad, what do you want to go there for? I want to go to Camp Mishawaski. <laughs> Dad, go to bed. It isn't even dark yet. Well, close your eyes and go to bed. <laughs> Can't I just close my mouth? All right. But keep it closed. Yes, Daddy. Most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Anybody think I was asking you to go to Siberia to work in the salt mines? I'd rather go to Siberia. <laughs> well, we'll see if it can be arranged. Father, Janie Liggett went to Highland last year, and she hated it. Is that so? Her father said they had a wonderful time. But it's just like the old lady's home. You have to walk around on your tiptoes, and you can't even talk. <gasps> Kathy. I didn't say anything, Daddy. <laughs> Highland Hills is one of the finest resorts in the entire country. But it's so dead, Father. There aren't any boys there. Or anything. <laughs> well, Bud will be there, and he's a boy. Father. Boy, am I going to have fun. Look, I know it's your vacation. I want you to have a good time. But don't you think we ought to pick out a place we can all enjoy? You mustn't be selfish about it. Bud, you wouldn't like a place that's all cluttered up with Betty's boyfriends, would you? I'd like it better than Highland Hills. <laughs> and Betty certainly wouldn't want to go to a spot where they do nothing but play baseball, would you, Betty? I'd rather go there than Highland Hills. And you certainly wouldn't want to wind up in a hole called Washy Whiskey. <laughs> Mishawaski. That's even worse. 
Now, at Highland Hills... Father, why can't we just go back to Round Lake? Everybody likes it up there. Highland Hills is a place for comfort and relaxation. It is noted as a fisherman's paradise, a spot where whole families can enjoy a peaceful, restful vacation in the most attractive of surroundings. Nestled in the foothills... Daddy! What is it, Kathy? Patty Davis is going to Camp Mishawaski, and she's my best friend, and I don't care if I do have to go to bed. I don't like Highland Hills. Well, I'm not concerned whether you do or not. You only have half a vote. What? Jim, dinner's ready. Oh, we'll be in a second, honey. I was just explaining to the children... Mother, we don't want to go to Highland Hills. You can't have any fun up there, Mom. Honest, you can. Now, just a minute. Jim, if the children feel that strongly about it... But they haven't given me a chance to explain. We've always been very happy at Round Lake. It's not a question of Round Lake. They've all got a different place they want to go. And for the most idiotic reasons. Because they play baseball or because Dick Andrews is a lifeguard... Why should the whole family go to a place we know nothing about just because Dick Andrews is a lifeguard? Betty, why don't you answer the phone? I'll answer it myself. Man wants to do something special for his family, and what thanks does he get? Everybody acts as though I was sending him to jail. Silliest family I've ever seen. Hello? Mr. Anderson, I have all the information for you on Highland Hill. Oh, hello, Miss Thomas. Uh, what did you find out? They have a two-bedroom cottage available for the season. Good. And the manager says he's quite sure that cooking privileges can be arranged. Fine. Uh, what did he say about the rates? Well, there isn't much choice, Mr. Anderson. They just have this one cottage left at $54. That's without meals, of course. $54? Say, that's wonderful. That's even less than Round Lake. I don't think so, Mr. Anderson. Miss Thomas, we've been paying $500 a season at Round Lake, and that comes to over $60 a week. Mr. Anderson, this is $54 a day. Well, naturally, but... <laughs> a what? $54 a day. $54 a day? That's right. Uh, thank you very much, Miss Thomas. I'll, uh, I'll see you at the office in the morning. Would you like me to call them about the reservation tonight? No, I, uh, I uh, think we'd better forget about it for the time being. I, uh, thank you again, Miss Thomas. Good night. Good night, Miss Thomas. $54. Jim, everything's getting cold. You won't enjoy your dinner at all. What? I said it... Jim, what is it? Uh, nothing, Margaret. But I've just had a great idea. Oh? Yes, sir, absolutely great. Instead of arguing about Highland Hills and all those other places, why don't we just go up to Round Lake? <laughs> Well, everybody certainly had his own idea on the big vacation. So often that's the case. We all want something different. But I'm pretty sure there's one case where millions of folks all want the very same thing. I think you'll all agree, and a cup of coffee flavors the thing you want. And naturally, when you buy a pound of coffee, you're after the most in flavor for every penny you spend. That's just what you get, too, in our Maxwell House coffee. Here's the most famous flavor in all the world. Wonderful, good-to-the-last-drop flavor that makes you say, Mmm, mmm, that's real coffee. You won't find that famous flavor in any other coffee, either. No coffee but Maxwell House. And for good reason. We have a recipe, a mighty special recipe. With it, our Maxwell House people select certain fine varieties of coffees, then blend them in a particular way. It's the one way, the one recipe for famous good-to-the-last-drop flavor. And it spells the big difference between the flavor of just any coffee and the wonderful goodness of America's favorite brand. But taste that difference for yourself. See how much more flavor, more real enjoyment you get for your money in our Maxwell House coffee. Bring home that familiar blue tin tomorrow. Enjoy coffee that's always good to the last drop. <laughs> It's a hot Saturday in Springfield. A hot, sticky Saturday with the heat clinging like a moist blanket to the city streets and the leaves hanging limp and motionless on the branches of dusty trees. In the white frame house on Maple Street, however, there's great activity. The Andersons are preparing to leave on their vacation, and that's always a hectic occasion. 
like this. Let's see now. Uh, does that take care of all the office details, Miss Thomas? You wanted to send a memo to Mr. Buckley. Oh, that's right. Uh, memo to Phil Buckley, home office, subject summer vacation. Uh, dear Phil... Jim! I'm sorry. Yes, Margaret? Before Bud takes your bag out, do you want to take both pairs of bathing trunks? Yes, dear. The old pair's full of moth holes. Well, then leave them out. I may be able to fix them. Well, then put them in. <laughs> but I think you really ought to get a new pair anyway. Then leave them out. <laughs> oh, I think I'll take them along, just in case. All right, dear. Oh. <laughs> Where were we, Miss Thomas? Subject, summer vacation, dear Phil. Oh, yeah, dear Phil, as is my usual custom, I'm dividing my annual vacation into two separate weeks, the first of which I'm about to take now. In order to establish my family at Round Lake... Father! What is it, Betty? Mr. Manassi, you never brought back my blue dress. I brought it back myself. No, you didn't, Father. You said he had a headache and... Oh, never mind. Here it is. Oh. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, Miss Thomas. What did I say? In order to establish my family at Round Lake... Miss Thomas, when you get into the office on Monday, why don't you just copy the memo I sent him last year? He won't know the difference. All right. Oh, call Mr. Gribble first thing Monday. Good grief. Bud! He's taking the bags out. Oh. Kathy! You sent her out to bury those worms. Oh. Well. Do you want me to answer it? No, thanks. I'll see who it is. Wants to carry a whole can of worms up to Round Lake. In my suitcase. <laughs> Hi, Jim. Oh, hello, Ed. Come on in. I just came by to see if you needed any help. Well, that's mighty nice of you, Ed. Uh, you know me, strong back and a weak mind. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that, Jim? It's Ed Davis, honey. Oh, Ed, I want to speak to you. I'll be right down. Okay, Margaret. Just about ready to push off, huh? Just about. And so help me, you'd think they were going away forever. You've never seen such a lot of junk. Get your trunks packed? Oh, sure. They went off yesterday. But we've got about a dozen bags. I don't know how I'm going to get them all in the car. Yeah, well, you'll manage. <laughs> Ed, I'm so glad you stopped by. I wanted to give you our key. Oh? Of course, I don't suppose there'll be an emergency, but if there is, well, there it is. I'll keep an eye on the house, Margaret. Don't you worry about a thing. Oh, thank you, Ed. Margaret, you know I'll be back in a week. It isn't as though the house was going to be deserted all summer. I know, dear, but I'll just feel better. Dad. We're in the hall, bud. Say, Dad, I got everything in except Betty's suitcase. Why didn't you put that in? She's still packing it. It's all packed. That girl's got ears like a rabbit. Except when you need her. Bring it down, Betty. I can't close it. Oh, Bud, go upstairs and sit on Betty's bag. Are we almost ready to leave? We are ready to leave. Take Betty's bag out to the car and we'll be all set. Okay. Boy, I don't know what this family would do without me. <laughs> Jim, are you really ready to go? Sure. I just have to tell Miss Thomas one more thing. Uh, Miss Thomas. Yes? Oh, great. It's a busy little joint, isn't it? We'll get out of here at midnight. Are you, Jim? Well, hello, Hack. Oh, Elizabeth. Margaret, dear, we just had to come over and say goodbye. Oh, how sweet. I told her you'd be up to your ears, but she wouldn't listen. Hector? Well, they're going away on a vacation. They haven't got time to stand around and gab. Oh, Hector, you know we're always glad to see you and Elizabeth. Say, Hack, would you and Ed like to do me a big favor? Sure. Just name it. See if Bud got our bags in the car all right. Somehow, well, he did it too fast. Sure. Come on, let's go, Ed. We'll have everything all set for you, Jim. Thanks. Is there anything you want me to do, Margaret? I can't think of a thing, dear. I've locked all the windows, defrosted the icebox. Margaret, everything is taken care of. Uh, why don't you and Elizabeth go outside? You won't forget to lock the doors. The doors lock all by themselves. But I'll make sure they're good and locked. All right, dear. Come along, Elizabeth. Men can be so stupid about these things, can't they? Oh, they mean well. Oh. Miss Thomas? Yes, Miss Anderson? Uh, where were we? You were giving me a message for Mr. Gribble. Oh. Well, I'll give it to you on the way out. No, we'll go out the back way. All right. Uh, call Mr. Gribble on Monday and tell him that all the figures for the group insurance setup have been forwarded to New York. Right. We won't have any definite word for at least a week, and by that time, I'll be back in the office. Right. You've got it all straight now. The group insurance figures have been forwarded to New York. We'll have word in about a week, and by then, you'll be back in the office. Good girl. Uh, was everything all right, Ed? Well, not quite. 
Bud had the bags in all right, but he didn't leave room for anybody to sit. <laughs> That's my boy. Oh, gosh, how did I know? We've got it all set now, Jim. Where's Kathy? Kathy? I'm coming. Mother, when Bud sat on my suitcase, he broke something. I did not. Well, I heard something crack. I think going away is so exciting, don't you, Margaret? Oh, yes, very exciting. <laughs> Not that I'd know, of course. <laughs> I just sit here in this sweltering town and... Kathy! Ye gods, what have you been up to now? You told me to bury the worms. I didn't tell you to crawl in with them. <laughs> Betty, see if you can scrape some of that mud off her face. Yes, Father. All right, let's get in. I'd like to see if we can't get up there before Labor Day. Have a nice time, Mr. Anderson, and don't worry about the office. Everything's going to be fine. I hope so. Goodbye, Margaret, and if you have time, dear, be sure to drop us a card. Oh, I shall. Get your big one for me, Jim. Okay, Heck. A lot of fun, pal. I'll sure try. Are we all set? All set, Dad. Well, we'll be seeing you. Yeah. Bye. 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 Jim. What is it, honey? I have the most horrible feeling. I think I forgot to turn off the hot water heater. No, Margaret, you took care of everything. Dear, would you mind very much if we made sure? You mean you want me to go back? Oh, I'll go. Oh, no, never mind. Is that anything wrong, Jim? No, Ed, everything's fine. I'll only be a minute. Be sure it's off all the way, Jim. Yes, dear. Mother, I can't get the dirt off her face. She looks like she's been eating it. What were you doing, Kathy? Well, Daddy said I had to bury the worms, so I was digging a lot of holes. Why didn't you just dump them all in one hole? They were too crowded. I just put two in each hole because I didn't want them to be lonesome. <laughs> <laughs> but I had one left over. So you had to dig up a friend for him, huh? <laughs> Gosh, I didn't even think of that. I just chopped him in two. Uh, the pilot light was off, Margaret. You had nothing to worry about. Oh, thank you, dear. I feel much better now. Well, I guess we're about ready to go. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. What's the matter, Dad? I will. I can't find the car keys. Oh, Jim. Well, I had them two minutes ago. I started the motor. Maybe you left them in the house. Do you want Bud to go inside and see, dear? Never mind. I'll go. A and, Jim, s see if the door to the basement's locked. I locked it on the way out. Well, try it again, dear, just to be sure. <laughs> <laughs> Mother, I can't even scrape the mud off her face. Stick your tongue out, dopey. No, I don't want to get washed with spit. <laughs> Kathy, get some water at the hose bib and wet your handkerchief Okay, Mommy And come right back Say, Margaret, I told Jim we'd expect him for dinner at least once a week That's awfully nice of you, Hector Oh, Pish Tosh, it's absolutely nothing You know we're more than glad to have him Tell him to come over now, will you, Margaret? I certainly shall and why don't you mention it once in a while, Miss Thomas? I'll be very glad to. Hey, we're never going to get started. Oh, I think your father's coming now. Did you find them, Jim? They were on the stove. Well, hold on to your hats, kid. Oh, everything's all locked, everything's all turned off, and everything's all put away. Now, do you suppose we can get out of here? I hope so, dear. Have we got everything? All the luggage, all the packages, all the junk? I think so. Shove over, will you, Betty? I haven't got any room. Well, who has? Well, pull your suitcase around. It's sticking me in the ribs. Oh, don't be so delicate. Okay, here we go. Bye. Have a nice time. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 By golly, this time I think we're going to do it. See you later. Well, we're finally on our way. You know, I've never in all my life seen a family quite like this one. We go through the same thing every year. Dad. When I was a boy, we used to go away for the summer, and we never had all this excitement. When we were ready to go, we went. Dad. But not this family. <laughs> if it isn't the stove, it's the ice box. If you don't forget one thing, you forget something else. Say, Dad. What is it, bud? We forgot Kathy. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs>
flavor of truly good coffee. What a wonderful thing it is, hot or iced, any time of day. Yes, it's flavor that counts in coffee. And with our Maxwell House coffee, we aim to do everything we can to bring you the most in flavor. We start with our famous recipe. That means extra flavor blended in every pound. But we don't stop there. You see, air steals coffee flavor. And ordinary containers, like paper bags, can't prevent roasted coffee from losing flavor, whether it's ground or whole bean. That's why we take Maxwell House, fresh and fragrant from our roasting ovens, and carefully vacuum pack it in the familiar blue tin. No air can get in, no flavor can get out. And you get all the flavor and freshness you pay for. So for your money's worth and more in real enjoyment, make your coffee Maxwell House. Always good to the last drop. It's just a few minutes later in the driveway outside the white frame house on Maple Street. The Andersons have returned, retrieved the missing Kathy, and are on their way again. Or at least we hope they are, like this. Well, I guess they're finally gone. I wouldn't be so sure. With that family, you never can be sure of anything. Hector, where have you been? I just went over to turn off the water. Kathy left it running. Oh. Hey, hmm? you want to hear something? Listen. It's quiet, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, it sure is. Hey, you take a family like the Andersons out of a neighborhood and the place sure calms down. Nice, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, for about ten minutes. They're a wonderful family, aren't they? One of the best. Of course, I still think they had one child too many. <laughs> oh, Kathy's all right, Elizabeth. She's just full of pep, that's all. She's certainly full of something. <laughs> Gosh, I can remember the day she was born. She was just a tiny little thing, and Bud and Betty. Eh, it's going to be awfully dead around here. No noise, no excitement. No broken windows. I'm sure going to miss them. Yeah, they're nice people, all right, Jim and Margaret. Just as nice as they come. Well, stop sounding so mournful, both of you. They'll be back, all of them, in eight weeks. That they will, neighbors, each and every one of them. Yes, Father Knows Best is leaving the air for its summer vacation. But we'll all be back on September 7th. Margaret, Betty, Kathy, Bud... Roy Barkey and the Maxwell House Orchestra, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and of course, Father Jim Anderson himself, Robert Young. <laughs> now yours to enjoy, an instant coffee you'll love for breakfast every morning, an instant coffee you'll be proud to serve to your dinner guests. It's Instant Maxwell House the instant coffee with a famous flavor. Here's the happiest combination in coffee. Wonderful, good-to-the-last-drop flavor combined with the convenience and thrift of coffee made instantly in the cup. Tomorrow, try Instant Maxwell House, the instant coffee with a famous flavor, instantly good to the last drop. Now may I wish you all a pleasant summer and ask that you drive very carefully so that you'll be around to join us again in the fall. So until Thursday, September 7th, good night, good luck, and happy times. From the star of our show, Robert Young, and the makers of Maxwell House, America's favorite brand of coffee, always good to the last drop. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Ed James. <laughs> Now, hear the new Cass Daily Show on NBC.